In 2002, we saw the release of the original Ghost in the Shell standalone complex, a standalone Ghost in the Shell story that sought to, like all good science fiction, explore current affairs within a cybernetic world. The SAC series, directed by Kenji Kamiyama, was then expanded into a sequel season, film, and video game. And now, 18 years after the original release, Standalone Complex has returned to portray the world of 2045, now in full 3D CG for Netflix. Here's five things you need to know about the show. The 2045 project started like all good things do, at a party, specifically during the Yubari International Film Festival in Hokkaido. Shinji Aramaki was there as a guest and had been thinking about a new approach to take the Ghost in the Shell franchise. Also at that party was Mitsuhisa Ishikawa, president of Production IG. So Aramaki took his chance and pitched a Ghost in the Shell series using full 3D CG and motion capture to the president. Ishikawa's response was positive, but his first question was, Hall director, will you? Directing this series would have been an overwhelming task, so he reached out to Kenji Kamiyama and pitched them both as co-directors. Ghost in the Shell has had a history of great character designers. While they've all been based on the manga designs by Masamune Shiro, the original films were designed by the legendary animator Hiroyuki Ohira. Second Gig had Naruto and Hunter x Hunter designers Tetsuya Nishio and Takeyuki Goto on staff, and Arise had Kazuchika Kise, who built a huge profile across the noughties on stuff like Holic. And 2045 refuses to let us down by bringing on Ilya Kushivnov, a Tokyo-based Russian illustrator who's been referred to as a genius by Hideo Kojima. He previously worked as a character designer on Birthday Wonderland, but the way he shades his characters really gives off the impression that his work is suited for being adapted into 3D. CG anime is a difficult challenge. The directors recognise that while realism is appreciated in Hollywood movies, the opposite is true for anime. Yet they still wanted the detail and character performances that come with realistic styles. Therefore, the result is somewhat of a hybrid of animation, one that's constantly going to be balancing realism and anime aesthetics to make something unique. However, it's worth mentioning that fan response to this aspect hasn't been overwhelmingly positive, with many saying that it feels like a video game cutscene. Unfortunately, while the directors are aiming for this hybrid stylized realism, that's also something game cutscenes are going for as well. As I said, it's a difficult challenge. Ghost in the Shell standalone complex is a reflection of the real world, but when you make something about the future in 2002, expect reality to catch up. There are now elements of the original series that actually match the way technology is used today. The original also covered themes that were much more relevant in the early 2000s. Therefore, in 2045, they're aiming to cover topics relevant in 2020, like the role AI plays in our day-to-day -day lives. They've even mentioned that there's some ideas they'd had only a few years earlier that now feel dated. It's not necessarily about predicting the future, but discussing current issues through the lens of sci-fi dystopia. Seeing as the new series will heavily feature AI, they went a little over the top with the theming and actually attempted to get an AI to write an episode of the show. This has been done before, but usually for the sakes of jokes, as it can get a bit weird and nonsensical. However, despite the difficulties in getting it to work, they actually did do some experimenting and believe that it's something that will be possible in the future if they can get it to stick to a narrative format. Thanks for watching OtaQuest in Japan, and feel free to subscribe to find out more about Japanese anime, games, fashion, music, and more.